How are you doing today? Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy New Year. I just want to make a video today. Um, you know, everyone's giving each other gifts and, you know, having New Year's resolutions and whatnot. What is a better gift than to give somebody the gift of everlasting life, right? So I would implore you to share this with your family members because I want to ask the most important question to you uh, that anyone's ever asked you. You know, if you were to die today, do you know 100% for sure that you would go to heaven? You know, a lot of people don't know the answer to that question. They probably never even, at, uh, you know, been asked that question before. They have no answer to it. Or if they do, it's like, well, I think I've lived a good life. Or, you know, I think I did a lot of good in my life. I think I did a lot of good works. But according to the Bible, that is not how you get to heaven. It's actually much more simple than that. God didn't make going to heaven hard. It's something easy to attain. Okay. And, um, you know, a lot of people don't even know that you can know for sure that you're on your way to heaven. You know, if you ask people that they're like, well, nobody can know that. Well, that's actually false and not in the Bible. The Bible actually says in first John chapter five, verse 13, it says, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. You see, the Bible lets you know that you can know the answer to the question, am I going to heaven or not? It's in the Bible. You can know this answer. Uh, and the Bible says in verse 12 of 1 John chapter 5, it says, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. So the Bible's letting you know, right? If you have the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, you have everlasting life. But if you don't have him, you don't have everlasting life. So the question remains, right? I can know that I'm on my way to heaven, but it's through the Son. Well, how do I receive the Son? So before we can get to the final part of this, we have to understand that we're all sinners because in order for us to understand why we need to be saved or uh, what are we being saved from, why we need a savior, we need to understand why, right? What we're being saved from and it's being saved from our sin. So the Bible says in Romans chapter three, verse 10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. The word righteous means like good or perfect, okay? There's nobody perfect. Everybody's come short of God's laws, right? In Romans chapter three, verse 23, just a few verses past that it says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says all, right? Not just you, not me. The whole world has sinned, right? The whole entire world has sinned. And sin means the transgression of God's law, according to the Bible. So if I've lied, I've stolen, I've fornicated, I've drank, I've done drugs, I've done any of those things, committed adultery, those are breaking God's laws, okay? Uh, and because we have sinned, right? Because we've all sinned, we've earned something. In, Rev in Romans chapter six, verse 23, the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death. Now the Bible there does not just mean a physical death. However, we will all obviously die a physical death, right? But it doesn't just mean a physical death here. It means a spiritual death in a place called hell. So the Bible says for the wages, wages means something that I earn, right? So the, for my payment, for my sin, is that I'm going to die a spiritual death if I don't have the Lord Jesus Christ, right? And uh, we'll finish that verse after, but in Revelation chapter 20, verse 14 and 15, the Bible says, but death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You see, so the first death is my physical death. I'm gonna die a physical death because I've sinned, okay? But if I die without the Lord Jesus Christ, according to the Bible, I'm gonna die a second death. And that's where I'll pay for my sins for all of eternity. That's where people who are not written in the book of life will go to pay for their sins forever. And in Revelation chapter 21, verse eight, the Bible says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters, it's a nasty list, right? You're probably not a murderer. You probably never got down and worshiped a statue before. However, a lot of people have or worshiped Satan, things of that nature. Those are wicked sins, right? But the Bible says, Right after that, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burned with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. I've lied before. I mean, everybody's lied before. Uh, you can at least admit you've lied, right? I mean, and we've definitely done things way worse than lying. I mean, let's face it. But this isn't just like, this is the sinner's club. We're all sinners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Our sin's leading us to hell. We're gonna burn in hell for all of eternity because of our sin. You know, our sin killed the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says in James, right? Chapter two, verse 10. 
Whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point is guilty of all. So what that means is that if I have sinned even one time according to the Bible, it's as if I broke every single one of God's laws, no matter what it was, even the, the least of the commandments. If I've broken one of God's laws according to the Bible, I'm going to spend eternity in hell paying for my sins. Now that's horrible news, right? It's horrible news because we're all sinners. And we've all come short of God's glory. Nobody deserves to go to heaven because we've all sinned. We've all broken God's laws. Now that's bad news, right? But the Bible is not filled with bad news. It's the good news. The word gospel literally means the good news. Well, what's the good news? Well, in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, the Bible says, But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You see, Jesus Christ, when he was on that cross, he took the world's sin on himself. His death, his burial, and his, death, his, burial, and his resurrection paid for the whole world's sins, right? And, um, you know, we can just interject here. It says, but God commanded his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, while we were yet liars, while we were yet murderers, fornicators, adulterers, you know, you name the sin, Christ died for us. He's died for everything you've ever done, past, present, and future every single sin that you've done. And if we just go back to Romans chapter 6, verse 23, right? For the wages of sin is death. We understand that because we've sinned, we've earned a spiritual death in, the, in, in hell, right? But listen to what the Bible says. Thank God for this but. It says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, the Bible says it's a gift that God has given you. God's got the greatest gift that he wants to give you. The greatest gift that he wants to give every single person on this world, in this world, and he wants to give it to you, and it's a gift. Okay? You don't pay for a gift. The gift giver pays for the gift. The receiver does not pay for the gift. The illustration I would say is I paid for this Bible. Now, if I come to you and I give you this Bible as a gift, right, and I say, you just have to give me $50, is that a gift? No, right? Because you had to give me something. You know, it ceases to become a gift if I have to pay for it and it becomes a purchase. Now, if I say the same thing, I say, hey, here you go, here's the gift that I paid for, right? I'm just gonna give it to you as a gift, but you have to wash my car four times throughout the year. See how it ceases to become a gift and it becomes a purchase because you have to work for it? You see, God does not mince words in the Bible. When he says something is a gift, he means it, okay? So he's saying that it's a free gift, that God has given it to us. And the Bible says, but God commended his love toward us, right? God the Father loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son, the son, who's also God according to the Bible. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, right? That's Jesus Christ. Uh, For great is the mystery of godliness, God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on the world, received up into glory. You see, the Bible says, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. We see, as Christians, we believe in a triune God that is one God made up of three different, distinct different persons, okay? And God the Father loved us so much that he sent the Son to die for all of our sins. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, Behold, a virgin shall be with child. Speaking of Mary, conceived Jesus Christ but, uh, you know, through the Holy Ghost. Uh, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. You see, they call Jesus Christ Emmanuel being interpreted God with us because Jesus Christ was God with us. Jesus Christ was God manifest in the flesh. And the Bible says that we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. You see, what that means is that because Jesus Christ was God, manifest in the flesh, he never sinned on this earth. You know, he was subject subject to like passions like as we are, right? He was tempted like as we are, but he never sinned, the Bible says. He's a perfect lamb of God without sin, without blemish. And when he was on that, so he was able to take our sins on himself. You know, like in the Old Testament, if you look it up, um, they always had to offer a animal with without, without blemish, without spot. Jesus Christ is our lamb. He is our sacrifice, right? That was done once and for all. And if we trust in what he did on that cross, the Bible says, we have everlasting life. And I'm just gonna prove that to you, right? So Jesus Christ was God manifest in the flesh. He was born of a virgin. He never sinned. The Bible says uh, when he was on that cross, he bore our sins in his own body on the tree, the tree being the cross. 
all the sins you ever done, all the sins I have ever done. It was as if the Lord Jesus Christ had done them on that cross. And he took the sins of the whole world and he paid for them, my friend. And the Bible uh, says that there's something that we have to do to be saved, right? So now that you understand all of that, you might even have believed all of that before. But now it comes down to what is the requirement to receive the gift? Now, the Bible makes it very clear, uh, right, that in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man shall boast. So just breaking this simply down, right? The word grace means that you didn't work for it or earn it. It's unmerited favor. And are you saved through faith? Faith means believing. So I'm putting my full trust on the Lord Jesus Christ to take me to heaven. The Bible says, and it's not of yourselves. You see, if salvation was of ourselves, it's not a gift. Because a gift ceases to become a gift and becomes a purchase when I have to do something in order to earn it or in order to receive it like I have to work for it or I have to pay something in order to get it, right? I have to live a good life or I have to stop, you know, sinning or whatever, which is impossible, you know? So the Bible's saying it's not of works that any man should boast. Boast meaning like how? Like I, oh, I've done many wonderful works. So of course I'm going to be going into heaven. That's most people's answers. Oh, yeah, I've lived a good life. Oh, yeah, I do a lot of good things. No, you didn't. <laughs> According to the Bible, we're all wretched and we all deserve to go to hell. The only thing, the only reason why we're going there is Jesus Christ's righteousness. And in order to be robed in Christ's righteousness, we just have to trust in what he did on that cross to take us to heaven. And I'm going to explain that further. In, in John chapter 3, verse 2, Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews. And he came to Jesus Christ by night and he said, Rabbi, we know thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Because Jesus Christ was doing so many miracles. He was raising people from the dead, right? He was feeding everybody. Uh, you know, he was uh, healing this, you know, healing people all over the place. He was doing a multitude of great and wonderful acts, right? And Jesus answered and said unto him in verse 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You see, I was born on March 23rd, 1990. That was my physical birthday. Now, Jesus Christ in that passage right there is saying, we need to have a spiritual birthday. Now, Nicodemus didn't understand what he meant because Nicodemus in the next sentence, in the next verse, in verse 4, it says, Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? He thought he had to be born again physically. But Jesus Christ is talking about being born again spiritually. I have a first birthday. That's my physical birthday. I need a spiritual birthday, right? And in verse 15 of John chapter 3, he explains how to receive the gift of salvation. What is the requirement? Because now we know it's not of ourselves and it's not of works, right? It's a free gift that I don't pay for. Listen to what Jesus says. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Very simple, right? Whosoever. That means anybody that believeth. Believeth synonymous with trusting. Okay, so I'm sitting in a chair right now. Now, if that chair had three legs, I'm not going to trust that it's holding. It's going to hold me up. So I won't sit in it. But if that chair has four legs, I'm going to sit in the chair because I trust that it's going to hold me up. That's the trust that the Bible's talking about, to have on Jesus Christ. You know, you can know who Jesus was, know what he did, but that's not what you're trusting in to get to heaven. There's a lot of people that have Jesus up here, but they, but they don't trust in him to take them to heaven because what are they trusting in? Yeah, I believe in Jesus, but I think you have to do good works. I think you have to stop sinning, which is impossible, right? Uh, I, I think you have to live a good life. If you believe in that, according to the Bible, you're trusting in yourself. And if by grace, then it is no more works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be by works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work, the Bible says in Romans, right? When Paul is explaining that. You see, it's either because the word grace means you didn't work for it or earn it. So what Paul is trying to say is it's either by what Jesus Christ did or by your own works. By you not sinning. By you, you know, you're trusting in that. I mean, you're going to sin anyway. Uh, you know, the Bible says... Uh, there, there's not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You are not going to make it there on your own righteousness. You're not going to make it there by your own works. You have to trust solely what Jesus Christ did. That, you know, so that's what the Bible is saying here. And in verse, in John chapter 3, verse 16, the most famous verse in the Bible, Jesus Christ reiterates it again and again and again and again and again. He says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Everlasting means forever. Something that you can never lose. It's, it, it's, it lasts forever. And you're not going to go to hell. But what was the requirement that he said? Believe. You have to trust in Jesus Christ to take you to heaven. That is the requirement. The Bible says in verse 18, just in the same chapter, He that believeth on him is not condemned. 
But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the only begotten Son of God. He hath not believed. He never believed. It doesn't say because he didn't do good works. It didn't say because he didn't get baptized. Jesus Christ said you need to believe. You have to trust. You know, the Bible says, For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God. Abraham trusted God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is a reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. The Bible consistently says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing, regeneration, the renewing of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says it's very clear that it's not by works. You either have to trust fully on Jesus Christ or all in yourself. Okay, that's what the Bible says. I'm gonna quickly go over just a few more things here. In Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas, they were in prison, right? And they were singing praises to God and they were and they were praying to God and God did a great miracle and he shut the foundation of the prison with a great earthquake. And the cell doors opened and the guard came in, right? And he asks Paul and Silas, right, that were uh, of Jesus Christ, right? He asks them, what must I do to be saved, right? He says, and it brought them out and said, this is verse 30, and brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? What do I have to do to go to heaven? What do I have to do to be saved from hell? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shall be saved. It doesn't say you could be saved, you might be saved. You will be saved if you trust in what Jesus Christ did for you on that cross. His death, his burial, his resurrection, where he bodily rose again. He showed the disciples the holes in his hands. He bodily ate with them. He bodily ro resur uh, ro rose, right? Where he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. You know, if you trust in that, you will go to heaven. That's what he's saying. That's literally what the Bible's saying. Now, a lot of people will say, okay, John, listen, I understand I'm a sinner. I understand I'm condemned to hell because of my sin. I understand that it's a free gift that I can't work for it. I can't earn it. Okay, I understand all that, right? Uh, and I understand that Jesus Christ paid all my sins on that cross, his death, burial, and resurrection. I believe all that. But what if I sin afterwards? You know, that's a good question that a lot of people ask. You know, in Deuteronomy and in Hebrews, God explains this because everybody is going to come short of the glory of God. You know, uh, the Bible says, if you say we have not no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. You know, if anyone says that they don't sin, they're a liar, according to the Bible. But listen to what God says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6 and 7. Because God explains this, this to us. He says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If he endure chastening, God dealeth with you his sons. For what son is whom the Father chasteneth not? Now, what he means by chastening, he means spanking or correcting, okay? When you love your child, you're going to spank them, right? Why? Because you love them, you want them to do the right thing. You're not going to cast them into hell anymore. You see, the Bible says uh, that we become children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So when you become a child of God by faith in Christ Jesus, God is not going to cast you into hell anymore if you sin against him. Because we're all going to fall short of God's glory. Obviously, when we get saved, God creates a new creature in us. You know, we don't want to do those things anymore. But if we do, because we will fall short of God's glory, God will chasten you. He's going to scourge you. He's going to spank you to keep you in, in line because when you, if you have a child, which I do, right? You know, if you have a child, you spank them because you want to put them on the right path. You're not going to, but God will never cast you out of his family. You know, that's like if your child uh, went to prison, right? He doesn't cease to become your child anymore, right? Uh, he might be the black sheep of your family, but he'll still be a part of your blood. You don't have to get born again and again and again and again and again. You only get born again one time. You see, God will never cast you into hell because he loves you which leads us to it being ever eternal, right? That means that you can never lose salvation because it's everlasting. The Bible says in hope of eternal life that God, which cannot lie, promised before the world began. You see, God promised eternal life, everlasting life, life that never ends, okay? So that means you can't lose it. And in John chapter 10, verse 28 through 30, uh, Jesus goes over what that means, right? He says, and I give unto them, give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Perish means go to hell. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man shall pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Okay, Jesus Christ is saying, once you're in God's hand, you can never get out of God's hand. 
Okay, you might be the black sheep of the family, like I said, but you can never get cast into hell because you are a child of God now. Okay, you're saved according to the Bible. That's why we, we have that great redeeming hope, right? We don't, we don't uh, you know, um, like the Bible says, you know, we don't worry like other people who have no hope. We don't sorrow as others who have no hope because we know that we're saved, right? You know, and we know God will correct us and chasten us when we do wrong, but we're saved according to the Bible. It's eternal because if you lost eternal life, life if I told you you had a life that never ended, right? And you lost it in five or 10 days, did you ever have life that never ended? No, because it ended. <laughs> that literally means it wasn't everlasting. That would mean God is a liar, but God's not a liar. The Bible says, but let God be true, but every man a liar, okay? So when you sin, God is going to correct you, okay? So if you understand all those factors, right? You understand you're a sinner. You understand you are condemned to hell because of your sin. You understand that Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, and his resurrection uh, paid for your sins. You believe he took your place on that cross where he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Now you understand it's a free gift that you can't work for, a free gift that you can't earn. You understand that it's eternal. It lasts forever. Once you get the gift, you can't lose it. If you believe all that, the last thing that you have to do, according to the Bible, is receive the gift, right? Now that you know all that, the only thing that required is that you trust in Christ and you call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says, right? So in order to receive the free gift according to the Bible, right? Because if it's a gift, it's rough. Let's just say I paid this Bible, I wrapped it all up, put your name on it, right? And I came to your door, I said, here you go, here's a free gift. Now, if you said to me, no, John, I don't want your gift. Did you ever receive the gift? The answer is no because you rejected the gift, right? Well, Paul, in the book of Romans, he tells us how to receive the free gift of salvation. The Bible says in verse nine and 10, and then 13, it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And the Bible says in verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible says you will 100% be saved if you believe this and ask God to save you. He will save you right now. Today will be your spiritual birthday. You know, and I always have to say to people, you know, if you have never understood all of the points that we've gone over today, you know, you, you might have said some of these things in the past, but you didn't understand that it was a free gift. You didn't understand it was everlasting life. I would like to lead you in a prayer right now and just ask God to save you. It's simple. Today will be your spiritual birthday. You know, the words of the prayer in and of themselves though are meaningless if you don't believe them in your heart, right? You have to believe them. Just as if you were talking to your father, right? Just talking back and forth. Listen, you would just say this and I would like to lead you in the prayer right now if you'd like to do that. Uh, you would just say something simple like this. Lord Jesus Christ, God, I know that I am a sinner. God, I understand that my sin has condemned me to hell. But God, I understand that you on that cross, you paid all my sins. Past, present, and future. God, I understand that it's a free gift and it's by faith and faith alone that I'm saved. God, I'm calling on you right now the best that I know how. And please, God, be my personal savior. Please, Lord, forgive me of all my sins. In Jesus Christ's precious name, I'd like to ask this and pray. Amen. You know, if you prayed that prayer right now, like I always say, you know, when I first got saved, the stars weren't falling from heaven, the trees weren't shaking, there wasn't an earthquake, but I was just saved the day I called upon the name of the Lord and believed it in my heart than I was today. You know, and if you believed the words of that prayer, you know, and you don't even have to pray with me, you do it on your own time. I'm just showing you what you'd say to your Father in heaven to ask him to save you. You know, and if you did that, congratulations, you are saved and you can never come into condemnation. You have passed from death unto life. And the people in the Bible in Acts chapter 16, Acts, uh, Acts 
chapter 8. After they got saved, right, they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. They asked God to save them. After that, they got baptized because you're going to walk in newness of life. That's the next step in the Christian life. If you were baptized in the past and you were not saved, you need to be rebaptized according to the Bible. Okay? So I hope you find a good church. I hope you get rebaptized. If you were baptized in the past and weren't saved, um, God bless you. I hope you have a happy new year. Merry Christmas and God bless you.